The downers, the most popular one and the one people think about is opiates, okay? Everybody should have Narcan now and should have some, but know how to use it. It's extremely simple. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. B with Dr. B Addiction Recovery. And the question we are going to uh, try to answer today is what is an overdose? And it's sort of a two part question. First, we'll answer what is an overdose or put another way, overdoses simplified. And the second part of that with this question is what do you do? Let's get started. Now, this is a topic that must create an incredible amount of stress for uh, folks that witness it. And uh, this is really geared towards uh, folks that uh, tune into this channel and somehow uh, whether you are an active user or you are around people that use uh, and an active user and or uh, you are loved one, family member, friend of somebody that uses. This is really geared towards you because an overdose is something you may potentially see. But more than that, if you are none of the above, it's still really good information. If you just hold on, you will see. Number two, I want to give a little bit of a disclaimer. This is in no way, shape or form a training video. It is an educational video and uh, I hope it is informative, but it is not a training video for some of these issues. You will need formal training. Let's get going. What is an overdose or let's look at this in a simplified manner. This causes a lot of stress for people and they're often confused about what you are supposed to do given the drug that is overdosed on. Let me make it simple. The kind of drugs we are talking about and the kind of overdoses we are talking about, uh, you, I would think of it as either upper or downer. Okay, upper or downer. Uppers, when we talk about an event life-threatening event that has cardiopulmonary cessation with an upper, we are you talking about things like cocaine, methamphetamines, amphetamines, okay? And uh, these are stimulant drugs. And when we talk about uppers, they don't directly have an impact on you stopping breathing. There is usually a catastrophic cardiovascular event, which could be anywhere in your body. They might have a stroke. They might have a bleed. They might have a heart attack. After that event, cardiopulmonary issues begin. So those are uppers, stimulants. So I think of it as the, that kind of uh, overdose, okay? They do not directly cause you to stop breathing. The downers, the most popular one and the one people think about is opiates, okay? Opiates have a direct impact on the central nervous system respiratory centers, okay? And they slow that respiratory center down. In fact, there's receptors for it and that is what opiates do. But if we even make it more general than that, I would think about all kinds of downers, whether it's benzodiazepines, whether it's alcohol, whether it's barbiturates, all of these things sort of slow you down. And that is how uh, the cardiopulmonary event occurs. Cardiopulmonary, breathing and the heart pumping blood, okay? So uh, uh, keep that part in mind, okay? The second part of that is a bit more complicated simply because nowadays there is poly... And so, you know, that begs the question, well, what do you do in the case of an upper? And what do you do in the case of a downer? Hold on to that thought. This is even more complicated nowadays because the demographic or the uh, culture or the kind of description of that your average drug user uh, more than ever before historically is poly substance abuse okay people have all kinds of things on board okay they might have their medication on board like psychotropics ssris they will have benzodiazepines on board they will have cocaine on board they will have opiates on board 
Uh, the classic one that we've always known is they'll have an upper on board and a downer on board, cocaine and alcohol, okay? Or they might have a goofball on board that used to, uh, which is going to be a stimulant, methamphetamines, and an opiate, okay? And let's say a person like that goes down, which is it? And do you do something different, okay? So let me make it uh, really simple. In all cases of what we're going to call an overdose, you do the exact same thing. And let me tell you what you need to do for prepare for that, okay? Uh, you can take a guess at what they have on board. Maybe you are very intimate with the person. Maybe you're partying with the person. Maybe you know the person well. You know, someone who's uh, on a pure stimulant rush, okay, is going to look a little bit different than someone who's on uh, a heroin uh, rush, okay? But I'm going to make it simple. Forget even all of that, okay? If you suspect an overdose, okay, there's a few things that you need to do and you don't even need to try and guess if their heart has stopped or if they're having agonal breathing versus no breathing, okay? What you need to do is uh, understand uh, a few basic things. Number one, everybody should have Narcan available, okay? Now, uh, Narcan, I've done some research on this. Narcan is available in all 50 states without a prescription at the pharmacy. There are many ways to get this for free and get some basic training on it. I'm not going to discuss it because it's really local specific. For example, at my Harm Reduction Institute, we hand this stuff out for free to substance abusers and we do training on it. Let's take a moment to talk about Narcan. And there's a couple of other parts to this. Uh, Narcan is really what's called naloxone. This is intranasal Narcan. This is right up my alley from 15 years as being um, uh, really a first responder by being an emergency medicine physician. But uh, intranasal Narcan has four milligrams of Narcan in it, okay? That is a large dose if you were going to give it intravenously or intramuscularly. But just know that intranasal Narcan is easy to use. It's available if just look it up on Google, talk to your doctor, talk to your pharmac pharmacist. Everybody should have Narcan now and should have some, know how to use it. It's extremely simple. It's just this little spray that you put in someone's nose and you press the button, okay? After 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, if it's not working, you give a second dose, okay? That's about uh, knowing about Narcan. Now, whether you know what the person used or not, I'm going to say it doesn't matter. Apply the Narcan. If you're not sure if the person is breathing or not, sometimes they have what's called agonal breathing, it doesn't matter. Use the Narcan, okay? Now, is there any side effects or adverse effects or things you need to be concerned about with using Narcan? It's a risk benefit thing. There's nothing with the Narcan that is more harmful than the person who stops breathing and their heart stops, okay? Uh, so go ahead and use it. One other little piece of information about Narcan. Don't forget Narcan is the brand name for naloxone, okay? And this is a short acting opiate reversal drug. How does this stuff work? This has to do with competition for the receptor uh, opiate binding site. What this stuff does is it wants to bind much more tightly to the receptor than the opiates, okay? So it races to those receptors in the respiratory center, knocks off the opiates and binds extremely tight, okay? And now the uh, it locks the receptor and it's open. What can possibly happen when you do that? 
The only thing that can happen is you could push the person and precipitate withdrawals, okay? Depending on where, where they were at when you gave it to them, okay? So that's number one, and that's, it is what it is. You've saved the life. Here's something that is much more important that I really want you to keep in mind, and uh, this is a take-home message. Even if you use the Narcan and the person is resuscitated, you need to get them to the hospital. Narcan, naloxone, is a short-acting drug. You do not know what they have on board, especially nowadays. And the effects of the naloxone or Narcan are going to wear off 30, 40, 50 minutes at best. If they have something like methadone on board, or if it's the complicated deal as so many people have poly substances on board nowadays, they will, do they can potentially dose right back off again and overdose again. So even if you have an event, you apply the Narcan, you bring them back, you need to get them to a hospital because they can go right back down, okay? So the first thing is A, it doesn't matter what happened. You know, if there's a suspicion of substance abuse and you are in that sort of uh, milieu or uh, in that environment where that is a big possibility, uh, um, apply the Narcan. If you're not sure if they're breathing or kind of there, apply the Narcan reapply the Narcan in at most one to two minutes, okay? And number three, once you apply the Narcan, okay, you still need to call 911. They need to still get to a hospital. That's number one. The drug doesn't matter. So let's say in a situation where it's a pure stimulant event that has caused the cardiopulmonary uh, catastrophe. Let's say they took a bunch of cocaine, they popped a vessel in their head, they, they're bleeding, and now uh, their heart has stopped, okay? The details of that don't really matter in the sense that what comes first, the cardiac event or the pulmonary event, the pulmonary event causes the cardiac event. That's not for you to really think about. When they go down, apply the Narcan. Is it gonna reverse uh, anything but uh, opiates? No, it's not. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. Apply the Narcan. Now we get to the second part, okay? Uh, just a few short years ago, um, I think 2015, you know, we've had over 300,000, okay, uh, non-traumatic out of the hospital cardiac arrests, okay? Nowadays, with so much overdose happening everywhere, it becomes all the more important for every single one of you out there to get some basic, get a basic life support training and certification. I, I don't even really wanna give you uh, any basics about it here right now for, uh, for many reasons, uh, but you need to get that certification and uh, it's pretty much, I think you can do it for free at, or at almost at no cost. Your local American Heart Association, a lot of nonprofits, get your basic life support. And uh, the only thing I'm gonna say about it is that it's no longer what we used to call ABC, airway, breathing, circulation. In certain situations, it's really changed since 2010 and it's circulation first, okay? So you need to get that certification, okay? And be able to administer and go through the algorithm of calling for help and applying a basic CPR, okay? This is really important. So two things, person going down, what the drug is, whether it's an upper, whether it's a downer, it doesn't matter, okay? Apply your Narcan. The benefit far outweighs any harm, even if you cause precipitated withdrawal. Number two, uh, in the event that uh, the Narcan doesn't, well, in any event, whether uh, the Narcan works or not, 
everybody, especially those associated within the, this community or have something to do with a drug user or are in that culture, you need to understand basic life support, okay? You can save a life and it's absolutely critical for this community to have that. Take home message. One, don't worry about why they go down, okay? Whether it's an up or down or mixed drugs or not. The end pathway of what you're supposed to do is the same. Have a basic, uh, get your basic life support certification, which is very easy and more than likely free. Everybody nowadays should have Narcan and be able to apply it. Naloxone, nasal spray, really easy to use. You can get it from your pharmacist in every state. There's a law that you can get it from a pharmacist even without uh, a prescription, even though it's a prescription medication. Many places will hand it out to you for free and get some training for free. So have Narcan with you at all times. Get your basic life support certification and don't worry about what caused the event. What you're supposed to do is always going to be the same thing, whether it works or not. Thinking of it that way, anything else you know, whether it's an upper, downer, the drugs they have on board, that's information you should try to give the first responder so he can get that information to the emergency medicine doctors and they can act accordingly. Otherwise, it's that simple, okay? So please consider what I'm saying here and go ahead and proceed and uh, get your certification, get your Narcan. If you like this video, please make sure you do like and subscribe. Add something to the comments. I really appreciate any feedback. Consider Patreon. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. See you guys soon.